Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome to another episode of Spitting Venom, aka the Venom Vlog. This is episode 284, and I'm just recording as many of these tonight as I can because uh, if I do move over into the new apartment tomorrow, I actually won't have Wi-Fi until Monday morning at the new place. Uh, so, uh, you know, I won't be able to make any videos or upload them at least until Monday afternoon after I get home from work. So I will definitely be dil dil uh, diligent and try to stick to my guns and, uh, and get these videos up for you guys because I know once Monday comes, I want to try to at least make two, maybe one or two videos a day for you guys leading up to the release of the movie. Uh, I'm going to do my best for that. So I promise and I will try not to cover too many spoilers because I know there's a lot of new stuff coming out there, which we've talked about some of them in recent episodes and including this one. So I'm sorry if you do not want any spoilers for this movie, uh, I would say turn away now because we're going to talk about Reed Scott and the reveal of the character he's playing in the movie. Uh, so uh, again, last chance, you know, back away now if you don't want to know who he plays because his what we're going to talk about is who he's playing and how his character ties into the movie and kind of how he feels about Eddie Brock based on an interview I saw that Sony released at the press junket event that was this past week, uh, weekend and a week. And uh, and he, uh, Reed Scott, you know, showed up and answered a bunch of questions about his character, uh, who is is not actually um, Patrick Mulligan, which they listed on IMDb. Although IMDb, we did say early on that not all that information could be true. A lot of it turned out to be true, uh, it looks like Michelle Lee might actually be Donna Diego, and there's some other you know things on there that might be right. Um, but with his character, I think they also changed Scott Hayes's character to Roland Treese. I think he's actually listed now on IMDb as Roland Treese. Um, so I think I mean that's as official as we're going to get until the movie comes out. I have a feeling of. Um, but then also we have Reed Scott, who is in the top billing. He's like one of the top five actors uh, listed in this movie, along with Jenny Slate and Riz Ahmed, Michelle Williams, and uh, Tom Hardy, of course. And they were all doing this big press event uh, these past couple days uh, here in Los Angeles at the Four Seasons Hotel in Beverly Hills. And so uh, Reed Scott came out and said at this press junket that his character's name is not Patrick Mulligan. He didn't say it's not Patrick Mulligan, but I don't think he knew of that uh, maybe, or maybe that was just like a filler thing for IMDb. But he said his character's name is Dr. Dan Lewis and Dr. Dan Lewis is actually a love interest for uh, Michelle Williams character Ann Wang so it looks like there's going to be a little bit of a love triangle going on here which I was not expecting I actually was not expecting that to happen in this movie I thought they were going to really try to play up and focus on the Ann and Eddie story and the Ann and Eddie relationship but I guess they are doing that but in order to do that they want to show a moment where you know, Anne kind of is just done with Eddie and she moves on and, you know, moves on with her life. So it looks like they have a very complicated relationship. They are clearly in love with each other. And if you saw in my, you know, recent video, I got to one of my questions was asked, uh, you know, to Michelle Williams about her character Anne and how she feels about Eddie. So if you haven't seen that, check it out. Uh, big shout out to Pat and Oswald and Facebook and everyone who put that event together. And it was really, really awesome of them to pick my question. I don't know if someone over there, you know, like just was like, hey, Venom Vlog, that's kind of cute. Let's put that in there. Or if maybe someone actually seen the show or whatever, I don't know. But that was, it made my day, really. It really made my day. So if you're out there, thank you very much. Um, and if it was just random, Thank you, Cosmos, <laughs> very much. Um, and so Reed Scott, you know, he sat down to this interview again. I'll try to find a link to it or put it down below. You'll probably see some footage up here uh, from it. And because uh, I couldn't, I was trying to look for the source and I couldn't find it. I think, I don't know if it was removed or deleted, but luckily I was able to find a re-upload and just have it for myself. So I'll have it, you know, playing here with no audio. Um, but uh, it, it's pretty neat because he was uh, telling like the story. He was like, you know, when I got the script, it, it, you know, we ended up changing some things because he was like, I wanted to explore the character and I wanted to know why, you know, this guy would stick around when there's like, you know, clearly Anne is kind of in love with her ex, you know, what's that relationship like? And he says, you know, uh, what we ended up landing on and discussing, uh, discussing the role, you know, with uh, Ruben Fleischer, he said, you know, why don't we just make Eddie or why don't we make Dan a fan of Eddie's? Like maybe, you know, Dr. Dan Lewis is, you know, it's, uh, uh, you know works at a hospital and he's maybe after a surgery one night, he comes home and maybe he's just a fan of Eddie Brock's like little vice story, you know, like, like his little vice news program that airs on TV from New York. And maybe he was just a fan. And so when he finds out Anne used to date Eddie, he's kind of like, whoa, what? Eddie Brock? Like the Eddie Brock? Uh, so he's a little, like a little starstruck and that kind of makes the, it kind of makes him likable. And I think that was the big thing they wanted was, you know, they were like, oh, in most superhero movies, it's the guy and the girl and she's like a damsel in distress. And she always like, you know, just kind of sits there and waits for the guy to do things so she can like be a part of him. And this is what they talked about. They did and didn't want to, uh, or Michelle Williams, as Anne, didn't want to do that. She, uh, you know, they mentioned, you know, in the uh, Patton Oswalt interview thing that, uh, that they did that, and has a moment in the story where Eddie, 
she's fed up with Eddie and she walks away from Eddie and she's like, I'm, I'm not here. Uh, I, I love you, but I love myself more, I guess is the line that she says. And she walks away from Eddie. So I don't know how early in the movie that happens or what's going on, but I think it's just going to lead to the failures of Eddie. You know, like he got run out of New York and then we talked about this before. He runs out of New York, uh, then he gets, you know, into a confrontation with uh, the Life Foundation and then they ruin his career and then maybe the backlash of that is that uh, Anne, who set up that interview, she gets, you know, maybe either fired from her job or she gets, you know, pushed too far or realize that Eddie screwed up again just like he did in New York and maybe she's like look I love you but I can't watch you you know tear yourself apart and I can't watch you bring me down with you so it looks like it's gonna be that kind of relationship and Dr. Dan is kind of like the rebound guy he's like the, the new boyfriend um, so when Eddie comes into his facility and he's you know has a condition he's you know freaking out from the symbiote and he doesn't know fully what the symbiote is doing to him uh, that's when they put him in the MRI machine, it looks like, and they go over that. And then when he sees the alien, he talks about in the interview, he's like, yeah, when my character sees the alien, it's a different story. The, the, the story kind of changes for my character because Dr. Dan, he's not like a tough guy. He's he kind of a little intimidated by Eddie, but he's also like kind of likes Eddie in a way. Like he's like, hey, this guy's actually cool. I like watching his show. Um, that's crazy that that's your ex-boyfriend. But then when he turns into an alien, the scientist part of him is kind of like, interesting like you know he's kind of freaked out but he's also kind of intrigued at the same time uh because it's like finding out you know there's life on from other planets is proof right in front of him and he's like that kind of changes his character as a scientist and as a doctor so i was like that's kind of neat so i'm kind of curious to see where they go uh they mentioned a lot of stuff you know selfless things that Anne does in the story that prove that she loves eddie brock apparently one big scene in particular so it looks like they give those characters a lot to do so hearing it through this interview some of it from this one and some of it from the uh, Patton oswald one on facebook uh, I'll put links to both of them down down below if I can find them. Uh, I know the Facebook one I can, but the other one I'll try to find a re-upload somewhere and I'll put it down below. Uh, but Sony did release that from a press junket. So it was just neat. It was cool information. I know it's a little spoilery, but it uh, it, it took me by surprise. I wasn't expecting a love triangle storyline in this movie, and I wasn't expecting Reed Scott to be like a love interest. We only saw him in like two or three quick uh, shots in some of the trailers, so I wasn't expecting him to have a role that has a little bit of meat to it. Uh, but I'm glad it is. I, you know, I'm glad he does because he He's a good actor, and I think he also plays a character named Dan on Veep, so now he's playing a guy named Dan Lewis, who if you look up in the Marvel Universe, there is no Dan Lewis. There was a Darcy Lewis, though, uh, who is a scientist, and she is the, the, the girl from Thor, uh, the one who says Meow Meow. Uh, her character's name is Darcy Lewis, uh, and then there's a couple other Lewises, Dr. Lewises in the Marvel Universe, but no Dr. Dan Lewis. So as far as I know, this is an original character, just like Jenny Slate's character, uh, Dora Skirth. Apparently these are original characters. For the movie and I'm kind of glad they did that so that there's something new to the table uh, to surprise us like this surprised me so that's the information I have if you want to watch the full interview I'll put it in the link down below um, let me know if you find it if it gets taken down or whatever you know we'll find some way to get it to you guys but I'm sure that information is out there uh, but for now I'll try to find a link somewhere and put it down below um, and maybe if we have any problems maybe I'll just upload it myself although I, I don't want to deal with any strikes uh, and I don't want to risk that either if they're being taken down so I might not do that <laughs> either um, so so, you know, just try to watch it as soon as you can, I guess. It has some cool information, but it does have a few spoilers in there, so be careful. Uh, but let me know what you think of all this information. If you made it through this episode, I really appreciate it. We'll go back to non-spoilery stuff uh, coming up next. We're going to talk about the uh, Venom First host number five. I'll do a full review slash discussion on that, and that'll be the end of my videos for tonight, and I'll try to get all these up as soon as possible for you guys. So thanks so much again for watching. As always, like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff, and let me know what you think down in the comments below. See you in the future. Peace.